This video is sponsored by Envato Elements. Hey friends, Dylan Bates here at The Final Cut Bro. Today, using Apple Mojo, we are gonna create an audio visualizer. Now, I've already created an audio visualizer tutorial, actually three of them, but they're getting a little bit old and outdated. So my teaching style has definitely changed and I wanted to update that format, but also there was a ton of questions I saw in the comments, usually about the same thing. So I wanted to address some of the most commonly asked questions within this tutorial. First thing is first, go ahead and open up Apple Motion. If you don't get the project browser, you can push Command, Option, and N. From there, we're gonna go ahead and select a brand new motion project. Then we're gonna set our duration to the length of the song. If you don't know the duration of your song, you can set it to something really long and then you can go ahead and adjust it afterwards. So I have this set to 240 seconds. I'm gonna push Command I and I'm gonna go ahead and find the music that I want to use. And this music is actually coming from our sponsor, Envato Elements. Envato Elements is changing the game with their incredible subscription service. They offer unlimited access to over 55 million assets. I don't know if you realize how large of a number that is. It is ginormous. They offer fonts, photos, stock footage, music, sound effects, WordPress themes, Final Cut Pro, and Motion 5 templates. They offer a super simple license and your license still counts even after your subscription has ended. If you follow the link in the description, you will get 50% off when selecting the annual subscription. Do yourself a favor, my friends, level up your video editing library and get Envato Elements today. Now that we've imported this track from Envato, we're gonna go ahead and look at about how long this is. It looks like it's 202. So I can drag the end of this project to that 202 point. I can also click on this stopwatch and we're gonna set this to 20200. So that'll be two minutes, two seconds, and zero frames. Now, if you need to adjust the volume of your audio track once you are in motion, you can jump on up to audio and you can adjust all your track settings here. You can also enable or disable all of your audio for the entire project down in this bottom left-hand corner. So now that we have the music imported, let's go ahead and add in a line. So coming to the right-hand side of this rectangle, we can select the line using that drop-down arrow. And then anywhere in the frame, you can just click and drag and hold shift and it will make a perfectly straight line. After that, jump into your inspector, go down to your geometry settings and find point 0.1 and point 0.2. Let's go ahead and make that nice and even numbers. Now this is going to dictate how tall the lines will get when you create the audio visualizer. I'm gonna set this to something like 400 positive and negative 400. Then I'm gonna jump into the style settings and set the width to 20. After that, I'm gonna jump into the property settings and reset the position parameter by clicking on that down arrow. So now it is directly in the center. So this is our original line. Any changes we make to this line is going to be replicated across the board. So all we're gonna do is selecting this line, go up to the top right hand side and you will find the replicate button. Go ahead and click that and you'll see how it replicates out that line five times. Now what we can do is go to the left hand side, find the shape settings and change it from rectangle over to line. After that, we can come down to the bottom. We're gonna find the scale randomness slider. Click on that down arrow and find the Y value. Clicking on the down arrow next to that, we're going to add a parameter behavior and we're gonna select randomize. Now this is just gonna add some random fluctuations to the lines because as it is right now, this entire block is going to be animated to the audio at once. And we definitely don't want that. We wanna make it look like it's being adjusted by separate frequencies. Once we've added the randomized parameter, we can go over to the amount slider and we can drag that up quite a bit. And if you play through, you'll see how they are actually shaking around quite a bit, giving it some nice random motion. We can also change the apply mode over to add and subtract if you want a slightly different look, just like so. I'm gonna go ahead and just leave it on add. Then if you want, you can also change the random seed. So I'll just go ahead and click that a little bit and it'll change up the look. Okay, so we have our randomized slider. Let's go ahead and go back to the replicator. And from there, we're gonna find the scale parameter. Locating the Y value, set this down to zero. So that should zero out our lines completely. Going to the right hand side, we can find this down arrow. 
We're gonna add a parameter behavior and we're gonna select audio. From there, this is where we can actually start to see the audio visualizer coming together. We can click on this down arrow in the audio well and select Hip Hop Epic, which is the music, again, from Envato Elements, our sponsor. Now, you'll notice it says analyzing audio. This is going to take a while. And so this is what I would suggest. If you are using this for something like a podcast or something along those lines, I don't really recommend it. I would recommend you actually get a third party application or something along those lines to make yourself a audio visualizer. And that's just because this particular method happens to take a long time. I would recommend that you probably don't wanna use this for super long form content, but it does work well for music. Okay, so we have it all analyzed. And if, if we play through, we can see how the music is reacting to our replicator. If you want to change out your settings, you can actually come down here and find the scale parameter. So if you want this to even grow larger, you could drag up that scale parameter. You could also change the smoothness. So I'm gonna push Command A and that'll give us the keyframe editor here. We can actually smooth out the frequencies here. So if I drag up the smoothness way up, you can see how smooth it makes our keyframes here. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at one for myself, but you can do something different for your particular audio visualizer. Okay, so we have our first main replicator. I'm gonna push Command-8 to get rid of the keyframe editor. We're gonna to need to make 10 more of these. So selecting that replicator, go ahead and push Command-D. We're gonna to need to do nine more of these, so I'm gonna push Command-D to duplicate it and just keep going until I have replicator copy nine. So I have replicator copy nine. Now I know that means that I have 11. Hopefully this isn't confusing because the replicator doesn't have a number attached to it and replicator copy doesn't have a number attached to it. It should say replicator nine, which means 11 if you add in the two extra replicators that don't have numbers attached. Let's go ahead and get these positioned properly. So selecting replicator copy nine, we'll jump into the property settings and we'll find the position parameter under the X value. We're gonna set that to negative 1,240. Make sure you set that for replicator copy nine. Then going to the bottom, we'll find replicator, just the original one and we'll set that to positive 1,240. Now, rather than figure out the math between each and every one of these replicators, we're actually gonna let motion do the thinking for us. So selecting that first replicator, hold shift and select all of the replicators at once. Then we can jump up to the object settings, go down to alignment and motion has this really handy feature, distribute horizontal centers. So what that is going to do is it's going to spread out all of these replicators evenly across the board between the two selected points that we just had. So now what we need to do is assign separate frequencies. So to do that, selecting the audio parameter, we can now look at this audio graph. This is showing us all the audio waveforms that are happening within the song. So all I'm gonna do is click on this arrow here I'm gonna drag this down just so we get these far left frequencies. So again, we're gonna to need to let it analyze all the way through and you definitely wanna wait or it can cause some serious problems with your audio analyzer. So now that it's completely analyzed, I can jump to the next one and do the same thing, but this time we're gonna select separate frequencies. So I'm just gonna use these two arrows to select a separate frequency. And then we're gonna go down the board selecting each individual frequency. And you'll see I didn't let it analyze all the way through, so these waveforms are actually not happening properly. If you do that, go ahead and just go back and slightly adjust the frequency range and that will reanalyze that audio and hopefully fix that problem. Okay, so after that long and tedious process, I have all of the audio frequencies selected for each of these different sections. So if I were to play through, we could actually see the audio visualizer coming to life. But you'll notice that the randomized feature is happening identically across the board. So what we need to do is go into each of these randomized parameters and change the random seed. So I'm gonna click that change random seed button right there next to the random seed. And we're gonna do that for each of these randomized filters. So now the randomized feature should be slightly different across the board, giving us some different variations in height. 
Okay, so we have this basic audio visualizer happening now. Let's go ahead and add in some color to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and collapse this group by clicking this arrow here. We can rename this group to be the audio visualizer. Then all we're gonna do is jump into our library, find our generators panel and look up the gradient. Go ahead and drag that over into your project. Then we're gonna right click that gradient and select add image mask. We're gonna drag this audio visualizer into that image mask. So what that's telling motion is anything that is where this audio visualizer is using the alpha channel will be cut out where the gradient is. So now we can add in some some nice coloring here. If we jump into the inspector, we can go to the gradient settings and set the colors to whatever we like. So let's say we want some nice red, maybe some purple. And now we've got this really cool color scheme. But then let's say we wanna add in some nice looking glow. All we need to do is select the group of the gradient, jump into the filters, locate the glow, and we're gonna want to use neon. We can go ahead and drag up the outer glow a ton so it's really spread out. And if you wanna go even beyond the 200 point, you can actually click on the numbers and drag up and that will stretch it out. Then we can bring the outer brightness down just so we get a real nice subtle glow like so. And so now our audio visualizer has this really cool looking glow to it. Okay, so the next things I'm gonna get into are how do I apply a different song to this audio visualizer? And unfortunately, it's not as easy as I would hope. I should add, this is going to be available on my Patreon. So if you want to download this audio visualizer, you can. You're just going to need to follow these next steps to apply a new track. If we wanted to bring in a new track, we would push Command I and we'd locate the song. And again, this is another track from Envato Elements. I'll go ahead and push Import. We can jump into our audio settings and find the two different audio tracks. I'm gonna go ahead and disable the hip hop epic. Now what we can do is jumping into our audio visualizer, we're gonna to need to locate each and every one of the audio parameters. Now, an easy way to do this would be to actually search up the audio just like that using the search feature. So now we can see each of the individual audio parameters. Then you're gonna to need to go through individually and we'll click and we'll select the new track. So again, we'll need to let it analyze and you're just gonna to need to do this every single time. So that's why I wouldn't particularly suggest this if you are doing a podcast or something on a regular basis, I would probably buy a third party plugin. But if you just need this quick one and done, um, then this might be a really good option for you. So that's done analyzing there. And again, we'll need to do that for each and every line and make sure you sit and wait and let it analyze all the way through. The good news is, is once it's analyzed once, it actually uh, speeds up quite a bit. So now that I've gone through and changed out all the audio tracks, if I press play, we can see how it's working. So you can see that the audio visualizer is working with a completely brand new track. You will notice this portion right here is not really playing much. That's because I didn't let it analyze all the way through. So make sure you let everything analyze all the way through. That should solve those problems. The last thing I'm going to cover is how to export this. So to do that, you're gonna wanna go up to the share menu and select export movie. Now you have a couple options here. One option is to change the video codec to Apple ProRes 4444 and then go to the color channels and add color plus alpha. The problem with this method is even just this two minute song is 40 gigabytes in size. So it will export with an alpha channel, which is great, but it's very, very hefty. So what you can do is select H.264 and we're just gonna select color. That'll bring it down to two gigabytes, which is great. And then you can use some blending modes like an add blend mode or a screen blend mode in Final Cut. And that will let you overlay this on top of something. So let's say I want to export this as audio visualizer, I'll press save. Then if you wanna see the progress of the export, you can see this little spinning wheel here, just click that and this will show you the progress of the export. Another option you have that might be a bit faster, however, it's not gonna bring over the audio, so you'll have to bring the audio in separately, is you could convert this over to a title. So if we go up to file, we can go down to convert project to and select title. The title source will be none, 
and it's going to bring in some text that we'll just need to get rid of here. So we'll go ahead and delete the type text here. Then we can push Command S to save it, and we could just call this Audio Visualizer, and I can throw this in my tutorials list and publish that. So this is going to publish this over into Final Cut Pro. Now, unfortunately, due to some weird limitations with motion in Final Cut, you can't actually export audio into Final Cut Pro, and you can't really build this as a plugin, which is really frustrating. Um, um, I keep hoping for maybe a change in that down the road, but who knows. But what this does is rather than needing to export the entire file, uh, it's going to send it over as just some audio waveforms that are pre-animated for you. So I'll go ahead, locate it in my titles, we'll go to my tutorials, and you'll see the audio visualizer is here. And it's gonna take a while to load it, but now you can see that I actually have playback on my audio visualizer here in Final Cut Pro without needing to export it over. So I will need to bring in the audio separately, but that is an option and it's gonna keep your file size much smaller. This was only 40 megabytes instead of two gigabytes. So hopefully this tutorial was helpful to you. I cannot wait to see you in the next one.